Mike who? Ken. Is this Linda? Yeah. Can you contact us in regards to getting some help? Yeah. I, um, I called an 800 number. I thought it was like a referral service. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Let me turn my TV down. Go ahead. Hey, this is Mike Ted, Ontario Call Addiction Specialist. Mike who? Ken. Is this Linda? Yeah. Can you contact us in regards to getting some help? Yeah. I um I called an 800 number. I thought it was like a referral service. Um, do you guys accept Medicare? Um, well, like you said, a um, referral service. Uh, there are places that do accept Medicare, yes. Okay. Um, is that definitely something that's needed? Um, that's my insurance, yeah. Okay. I mean, in Medicare, you know, that state, uh, Government insurance, you know, definitely is helpful with medical. It's, you know, in this industry, it's not too helpful. I mean, it's definitely going to be a uh, more help, you know, more therapy, more hours of therapy, you know, better quality of therapy. If, if you guys can pull together as a family to, you know, get into something better. What would be something better? Well, um, for instance, you know, most government funded programs are standard 21, 28-day programs, you know. Um, I mean, there are, you know, uh, private facilities, you know, I always, I'm a firm believer in, you know, the 90-day programs are longer the stability and, you know, the ability to gain and all of that. Um, and how much would something like that cost? Uh, well, the good, you know, the really good programs, you know, that really go above and beyond your standard treatment. Um, I mean, there's, most families do loan options, you know, paid out over a few years. Um, but the total, you know, twenty, thirty thousand. Um, and loan options like the facility would offer a loan. Like, it'd be just like a car loan. And then the facility would set that up, though. We can help. We can help to get the loans approved. But uh, yes, we can help do that. What company would you go to to help me get a loan? Um, it would be the it would uh, the medical loan. Uh, it's called a medical loan. Uh huh. The medical loans run through the major credit card companies. Oh, you don't have your own finance company that would help. find a facility then? Well, 
I take something for uh, seizures. Uh -huh. It's called quetiapan. But that's not for the psychi psychiatrist. Yeah, right. they, they, they subscribe that. That's actually, it's part of, I have a seizure disorder, so I take that, and then I take lithium for, uh... So your psychiatrist prescribes you seizure medication? Uh-huh. Okay. And then you've been taking lithium for how long? Um, almost two years for manic depression. If you do the, if you do the lithium test, Every so often. Uh huh. Okay. And before that. That's it. Just those two. And how uh, old are you? Forty-seven. So before you were forty-five years old, did you take any type of medication like this? No. Ever? No. Okay. And can I just? I mean, without going into detail, and I apologize. So. Can I ask what really happened like two years ago that they started giving you lithium? I mean, that's like, did you try to hurt yourself or did you really, you know, um, kind of just... I have, uh, I have manic depression. I don't know if you know what that is. I do, but, you know, uh, you don't just get put on lithium. I mean, there's usually something that occurs. You got put into the hospital. You tried to hurt, kill yourself. No, I just had, had a, uh, a manic episode where uh, I couldn't sleep for, oh, it was almost seven or eight days. And, uh, I, yeah, I just, I started to, I was living in a different world. I couldn't, I didn't know what was happening. Yeah, and um, what kind of addiction are you struggling with? Alcohol. about 20 years. Okay. Just a sec, I just know that you have an alcohol problem? Yes. Okay. Did the psychiatrist forewarn you or warn you about drug-induced chemical imbalances and that at all or no? Yes. And and she, she told me to get treatment, too, for the addiction. I'm just okay. now getting around to it. Or anything, and trust me, I don't have any doubt that the manic depression was there. Um, but you know, the doctor should have, shouldn't have prescribed you these medications. He should have basically ordered you to get into detox and treatments. You know, before any of this stuff is diagnosed. Because how can you diagnose a brain that's drug-induced chemical imbalance? Are you a doctor? I know that ethical code that a doctor should stand by. diagnose a brain with a drug-induced mental disorder going on. The all I'm saying is the chemicals change because of alcohol, not because you're just depressed, see? So do you think I should stop seeing the psychiatrist? No, I, no, I mean, if that's, you know, something that you feel is helping you, then no, definitely not. Um, should, I'm I just saying, should I stop taking okay. the medication? Obviously, you've gone through therapy and stuff, so you guys deal with, you 
know the issues at hand too that are creating depression. So it kind of all is combined together, is all I'm saying. Do you agree with that? That it's combined together. Uh huh. So uh, our goal for a good treatment program is simply to kind of strip it all down and get you healthy first, get you physically rehabilitated to the point where you can eat and sleep and feel pretty good again, all on your own without taking anything. Uh huh. Um. Then. And you go through a detox program to like really flush out all the toxins and residues, get your body truly healthy, and then focus on therapy to help deal with your underlying issues that, you know, is creating this depression so you can get a good handle on, you know, um, maybe communicating about them, dealing with them, um, solution handling, finding solutions to the problems. You know, dealing um, with solutions to how you can cope with problems that you can't just make go away. Um, you know, and, and but then also proactively looking at your life and focusing on moving forward as well and expanding into your life or your dynamics. You know, house, family, job, kids, relationships. You know, activities, things like that. Um, so where you're happy again, you know, truly happy. And believe it or not, I mean, it usually is, that's usually enough to eliminate things like depression and anxiety and, and stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I mean, but can I ask, you know... And it's hard to be hard to believe, but, you know, you're sitting here telling me that before 45 years old, you weren't taking this stuff. I mean, can I ask how your life was between... Well, I've, I've always had seizures. I've always had seizures. I was born with a seizure disorder, but, um, yeah, I just started taking the lithium a couple of years ago. And how was your life at, like, 30 years old? I mean... Uh, it was a wreck. Yeah. Do you recall times in your life that you were doing really good? Um, not really. I've always had problems with the, the mania, especially. And um, when I started drinking, it, it seemed to... In the present moment, it seemed to help. It subdued me. But I could see in the long term that that was being destructive. It, it seemed it, it, it felt good to me. It seemed to subdue me and take away the mania, and so I, I just started drinking every day. And pretty soon, yeah, it seemed to be like an all-day affair. Yeah. 